Hi, I'm Rich with Inside HPC. We're here at ISC 12 in Hamburg, and I'm here with Bill Manell from SGI. So, Bill, you know, uh, we're here at day three of the show, whatever it is, and um, who is SGI and who do you help? Um, so, we're the, we're the trusted leader in technical computing, and we work with customers that are solving technical problems, specifically in science, engineering, um, and other fields of technology, including big data analysis and, and uh, those types of problems as well. Okay, so what are you showing off here at the show? What's new and exciting from SGI? So what's new and exciting for SGI, from SGI this week is what we call our big brain computer. This is the, the UV2 platform, which is the next generation of our shared memory platform. So we introduced the UV1 um, a few years back, and this is the next edition of it. Um, the exciting thing about this platform is that everything has gotten bigger from that standpoint. One of the reasons we call it the big brain is that the, the memory that you can have per computer has gone from 16 terabytes to 64 terabytes. Mm -hmm. We actually have the only platform that has over four sockets and more than a terabyte and half of memory in a single system with Sandy Bridge. Uh, so this is a Sandy Bridge based platform moving from Westmere EX into Sandy Bridge EP from a processor standpoint. So, so moving up to the new processor, that not only gives you some performance advantage, it also some cost advantages. That's correct um, as well. So we've, we've moved into the EP realm of the processor, which gives us a higher performance. It gives us a lower price. It also gives us um, the capability of doing much more advanced I.O. capability and much, much better density from that standpoint. So we've doubled the density, uh, gone to 11 teraflops a rack and up to 16 terabytes in a rack. I was talking to a customer the other day, they had our, our titanium generation of product, they only had 384 gigabytes in a rack, and now we're getting 16 terabytes of memory in a rack. Is it just, you know, for the very high end, is it, or does it scale down to something that's, uh, you know, more departmental level? Oh, it's actually at all levels from that standpoint. So it can be for customers that need a lot of memory at one time, or can all the way go down to the department level. In fact, we see it as a great platform for the missing middle, those people who haven't explored HPC because it's, yeah. um, uh, it's more of a big PC in terms of how it feels. It's a single operating system, easy to manage, it can run all x86 type codes, um, one version of the operating system, an update date, all Linux based, so very easy, easy to administer, easy to set up, those sorts of things yeah, as yeah. well. So, so what is that big memory? What does that do for, for these scientists? What, what, is, what does that enable? Well, it enables people to, to innovate very quickly around new algorithms and codes. You can also bring in large amounts of data. And as opposed to a lot of algorithms we do, look for the needle in the haystack. The, um, the big brain computer allows you to look at the haystack and understand how everything is it's hooked together. So we had, you, you can look at our Facebook page, but we have a great, uh, we had a, a gentleman from uh, Calif from the University of Illinois who actually brought in all the Wikipedia database. And he actually looked around at all the interconnects. So he actually generated a huge amount of data just looking at that data. By itself, Wikipedia is not big, but he generated a ton of data just looking for relationships between parts. And he did that in a day. A day. He did that in a day, so he, he brought, in the, brought in the code, um, basically did his algorithms, and found his data in a day from that standpoint. He's looking, for, he's looking for questions, not so much answers. He's looking for questions. How does the data interrelate, and are there things we're not seeing from the way the data is arranged? Well, that's the big memory, the big brain, super clear. You also do the traditional clusters as well. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yep, and we've just recently introduced all of our new Sandy Bridge-based clusters, um, both at the blade level uh, optimized for HPC such as ISAX and also at the, the rack mount level, the rackable clusters for those customers that um, go anywhere from a couple nodes all the way up to hundreds of nodes in terms of their compute. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what did you bring to show us today? What, what do we got? Uh, this is actually a blade uh, from our new UV2. Um, oh, yeah. So it's, uh, it's actually got um, a couple inside. You can see a couple motherboards. Oops, excuse me. Um, it's got a couple motherboards, each of which has a Sandy Bridge socket on it. And then it has an extender card down here at the bottom, which actually uh, ties into the Numalink fabric, which is how we get the shared memory capability of the machine. And our Numalink chip that we develop internally, which is our memory control, actually resides on this extender card. Okay. Um, and so this is the packaging, blade type packaging. And again, um, all the memory in the computer can be accessed from any one processor, so up to 64 terabytes of memory. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, uh, SGI has long standing roots in the top 500 and 
you know this show and everything did how did you guys do on the top 500 well we have uh, we have our NASA Pleiades machine which is number 11 from that standpoint so mm -hmm. that they actually added some new ice X pl uh, uh, racks to that platform so now it's got a, a blend of uh, uh, Nehalem, Westmere, and uh, Sandy Bridge. So it's an interesting story in the fact that with our ice platforms, a lot of customers start small and it's expand over time. And that's actually started with Harper Town, and then they've replaced their Harper Town with some new Sandy Bridge based around IceX. So it's a great example of a customer starting small and then building out to their, I think they're about a one point, uh, don't quote me, but 1.3, 1.4 petaflop machine at this point. Started very small. Started with, I think, eight racks, actually. Kind of a wrap up here, but I wanted to talk to you about container-based uh, uh, HPC. You guys had a big recent win here. Yeah, you? actually at CSC, which is the Supercomputing Center of Finland, uh, we're actually deploying a very large ice cube air. Uh, there's going to actually be a crane machine in it. Um, and we're going to, we're very excited about building it. It's, it's of our, our, we call it our R80 line, which is our, which is up to 80 racks of compute that we can bring in. Um, and it's, it's air cooled. And obviously, you know, Finland's a good place to do air cooling. Um, so most of the cooling can be done by outside air as opposed to either water cooling or, or some kind of a, uh, an air conditioning type of system. 